Homestar Runner is a web cartoon that really needs no introduction. A defining text of the early internet. If you haven't watched it yourself, you're probably a fan of someone who was deeply inspired by it. Like, maybe even the guy making this video. As a show, Homestar Runner hangs around. We've honestly gotten more content lately than we were for a while there, but it's clear we're past the age where they were consistently putting stuff out. And fair enough, times change. You don't want to be working on the same thing forever, and Matt and Mike Chapman have done a pretty good job branching out into other ventures. Notably, Matt Chapman worked on this little indie cartoon with a bit of a cult following. Maybe you've heard of it, it's called Gravity Falls. Strong bad, get off my property! I hate you, Grunkle Stan! Shut up your face! I will shoot you with my gun! And I guess that was enough to get the brothers chaps in the room with Disney to make a series of shorts for Disney XD. Or, well, the Disney XD YouTube channel. I, I don't know, I think they aired on the network at some point, I'm unclear, but they were definitely originally released on YouTube between 2015 and 2017. Say hello to... Two more eggs, two more eggs! Two More Eggs shares a lot of DNA with Homestar Runner. You can really tell it's the same guys. There's two big differences aside from the lack of Homestar characters, which let's be real, Homestar Runner was never exactly beholden to. For one thing, it's less mean-spirited. I mean, it's a Disney product. But even then, they get away with some pretty dark stuff. The other is that they're limited on time, with most episodes being between one and two minutes. And while this mostly works, every now and then there's one I wish had a bit more time to develop. But this is really funny and captures a lot of what made Homestar Runner work, and I never hear fans talk about it. It's got the absurdest pop culture parodies and goofy nonsense dialogue fans love, and I sincerely encourage you to check it out if you haven't. But for now, let's discuss what you can expect to see from Two More Eggs. Double? And double and doobly do! If there's anything resembling a face to two more eggs, it's Doobel, this wacky looking dude who rolls around and says Homsar style nonsense. I mean, come on, look at this. Thank my grandmoosh. <coughs> yeah, he was raised by a cup of coffee. I'll admit, despite him being the most recurring character, he's far from my favorite. That's not to say he doesn't ever get a laugh, though. Michael Abraham Johansson? Uh, how, how do you know my name? Hit the lights! There's some good Doobel segments, like the one where he invades a country song or meets his rival, Rinfrau, or where he has to transport a dead body. Actually, all the songs in this show are pretty good. Swerve, 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 twice! Now stop! And let this gopher in. No, thank you. I'm I'm going to stay here. I'm not... There's no way in the world I'm getting in that cab. But overall, I'd consider this one of their weaker segments. A lot of the humor just comes from saying complete random nonsense. Another thing that's similar to Homestar Runner is how they'll just do segments that are entirely a reference to some throwaway thing in a previous cartoon. I like some, like this Beef Stroganauts commercial, while others feel kinda pointless. Like at one point, Doobel wanders into this Care Bear style baby show, and I think it could be funny if there weren't a character sarcastically commenting on the whole thing. This is the only Doobel sketch that has that why. I am going to name nine cars. He's going to name nine cars! Anyways, then these guys get their own full cartoon that's just the worst joke from the first one repeated. Most notably though, there's a skit where Doobel has his own game which spun off into a full recurring series. Did you know we were called Egg Pose? What type of name is that? Oh uh, boy, you want tired humor on video game enemies? Okay, I'm starting this really negative for a show I recommended. To be fair, it's not all overdone jokes. I kind of like the instruction manual one, but this feels like the type of thing Dorkly would have been making circa 2009. The brothers' chaps are better than this. Let's move on to a segment I do like. Oh boy, it's Trunkles. Trunkles is a parody of old British kids shows. I know Matt and Mike are big fans of the show Bod, so I assume that's their main inspiration for this. It's just kind of fun listening to all the absurd made up British slang they include. In a medium receptacle, in a scotch and berrimers, and a factory of universal appeal, in a tremendous burden, 
and a pokey pibble pumpkin sprouting from a bag. Some of the stories in this one can get pretty funny too. This is the type of wild parody I expect from these guys. Occasionally commenting on goofy stuff in the genre while also throwing out their own absurdities. Where do trousers come from? No, Geordie. The Bellingham's hound man doesn't bring them in the night. All trousers come from the depot where the Bellingham's Hound Man works part-time. I wonder if any of the drawings in the fan drawings episode were real. Probably not, but it'd be funny if they were. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I liked every single Tronkle segment. It's a funny one. And hey, speaking of liking every segment... We can do it cause we're all CG! CGI Pals is so funny, man. Most of them just involve the group talking about the superiority of CG. But since we're CG, does that mean we're better? Why, yes. We are generated using the most advanced computer technology. And others focus on this ridiculous cast. Rotisserie, Trico, North Texas, I'm sure there's no other name for that. And my favorite, Lenore Street Bridge, a dog who does the Scooby-Doo stick an R at the beginning of every word thing, who gets subtitled, but the subtitles still have the R's? Can't you say anything correctly? Rust -riss. Radical research rats rewrite racy romances. Just an utterly absurd little segment. I love it. Now look, you're gonna hear some familiar voices in here. Matt Chapman has an amazing range as a voice actor. I gotta give him a lot of credit. But clearly he's reused some from the Homestar days. Hot Dip is clearly his limousine voice. Hector is so Homestar, it's kinda distracting, but we'll get there. And I'm pretty sure the Josho show just straight up is about one of the vittles electric skies. I lost my job at the pharmacy, then what do you know? Hey, it's the Josh o Show! Like, that really is just him. The Josh o Show sees unemployed dad Josh o making terrible arts and crafts. Everybody knows about the ancient art of paper folding, origami. C croc I'm an ancient crow! But forget about that, cause Josh o's gonna show you the very, very recent art of crackergami. It's so sad, it's funny. Something the brothers chaps are very good at. And that's all I have to say about that one. There's two other big recurring segments, but I want to hold off on those and talk about the less recurring bits. They have some one-off cartoons, but they've definitely got more two or three offs. Like this science show, Hot Diggity, where a guy who knows nothing about science tries to explain science. But Photosynthesis. Ha! This week's tip is quite a tongue twaggler. And just like our tongue is how humans make food, photosynthesis, etc., is how plants make food. Only three episodes, sadly. They do this parody mobile ad called New for Mobile, which has a follow up mocking helplines and then a reprise of it with Doobal. Actually, that's not uncommon. They'll do a one off bit, then repeat with one of their more established characters, like this parental notice bit. Or Street Road Junction, which was initially a pitch meeting between two Doobal characters that then included Doobal in its only other episode. But we run a tight ship here in Street Road Junction! We all I'm your eyeball! Ah! Get out of there! The show's namesake get a segment with Poach and Scramble, two eggs who like to dance. Grown-ups made up by kids! <laughs> Chloe Abraham Brian Face remembers how to spell Tuesday backwards from when she was nine. Gankror, Celestial Guardian of the Clank Tour, turns out two pretty funny toy commercials. Also, Gankror is a Celestial Guardian of the Clank Tour is just a fun thing to sing at someone with no context. One that really stands out to me is World's Best. We're the world's best ever, beautiful and the rest. That's why we named our company World Best. And then I suggested that we add an apostrophe S. World's Best! It feels like it should be a more recurring segment, but they only got one episode. It felt like there was so much more potential with this. Like, I could imagine this as a full series on the Disney Channel. But sadly, they only ever bake tiny pies. Early on, they had a segment called Bad Snacks about a mom blog giving out awful snack hacks. Did y'all know that old milk turns into yogurt? And old yogurt turns into cheese? 
That's a three in one mom splooge right there, people. Kablooge. Two episodes and it disappears really early, and I don't know why I thought it was pretty funny. But maybe it's just because we know the best snack is not for moms. <laughs> Hot Dip is a parody of extreme 90s and 2000s commercials for radical sauce-like products. They don't elaborate on what Hot Dip is supposed to be, but I always imagined it tasted like cane sauce. Dip out! Hot Dip! Were you gonna say or do anything else? Yeah, give me a sec. Oh, Hot Dip got a little dizzy on the way in. <gasps> This feels straight out a Homestar Runner. Like I could imagine a joke about Limousine breaking up in the 90s and Larry having to voice this weird mascot thing to make ends meet. Although the hot dip lore runs deep. It has its own sitcom and spin-off products, and it caps off the series with Hot Dip Endgame, where Hayden's mom gets into some hot dip and takes over the world. And after saving the day, they end on a hot dip montage of the various segments. They even introduce this final one with no more eggs. I believe this was supposed to be the finale to Two More Eggs, and I think it's a really good one, but Unfortunately, it wouldn't quite hold. Let me guess your name. Kenneth? Lumens? Is your name Lumens? Lumens, you should really buy this game. Hector and Kovic is a cartoon where Homestar Runner in the body of a little boy does the Chester A. Bum bit of excitedly describing stuff, and then Kovic, clearly voiced by one of the chap's daughters, says the funniest line of the cartoon. My family is having financial problems. Oh man. I wish my family could afford financial problems. I wonder if it's any of the little girls Homestar went up against, because I cannot express enough how much this character is just Homestar. I guess he's a little more hyper and excitable, and he has a bit of a lisp, but it's Homestar's voice, and it's all stuff I could imagine Homestar saying. Top of the key, swoosh. I'm not big on this one, but it does get laughs. So why save this one for last? Because after Hot Dip Endgame kinda ended the series, Hector and Kovic came back for a five-part finale where Hector sleeps over at Kovic's house. It's typical affair for Hector, although Kovic is a lot more talkative and the two honestly kinda have a nice bonding experience. And the ending? Hilariously depressing. Now arguably there is one thing after this that's kinda two more eggs. It's labeled two more eggs in the title, it's in the two more eggs playlist, but it doesn't feature the classic two more eggs intro and I think kinda stands as its own thing. Panda Practice, a cartoon about little girls starting a pop band. It's cute, but it doesn't really feel like Two More Eggs or Homestar Runner even. Although this girl is clearly the daughter of Champine and the homeschool winner. And if you get that reference, congratulations on being as Homestar poisoned as I am. These three are played by real little girls, one of them clearly Kovic's voice actress, and even their best friend slash manager, Luce Jelton, is voiced by Mike? I guess they were giving Matt's voice a break with this one, he plays like one character. This ran five episodes, and I guess I'm glad they've included it with two more eggs just so I can see another thing from the brothers chaps. I'm glad this is here, even if I think it kinda deserves to be seen as its own thing. But really, I barely hear anyone talk about any of this, but it's nearly 90 shorts of Homestar Runner humor. Even if one doesn't quite land, they're mostly under two minutes, so you're on to another one pretty quick. I do think Homestar has a more spotless Trek record, but I mean, this was never going to be as important to me as Homestar Runner. It's just a fun little thing that I think fans should know about. They're all in a big playlist, so if you're a Homestar Runner fan, I say start it up and just enjoy. Joy. And if you're not a Homestar Runner fan, I say watch Homestar Runner. I, I did like a podcast on it a few years ago with my friend Michael. There's, there's probably some good suggestions in that one. Okay, so until next time, on a scale of one to awesome, I'm super great. <laughs>
secret song. I can't believe it's you. I never knew it was true. Oh, secret song.